Across the red drifts and mail-clad forms, two figures glared at each other. In that utter desolation, only they moved. The frosty sky was over them, the white, illimitable plain around them, the dead men at their feet. Slowly through the corpses they came, as ghosts might come, to a tryst through the shambles of a dead world. In the brooding silence, they stood face to face. Both were tall men, built like tigers. Their shields were gone, their corselets battered and dented, blood dried on their mail, their swords were stained red. Their horned helmets showed the marks of fierce strokes. One was beardless and black-maned. The locks and beard of the other were red as the blood on the sunlit snow. Man, said he, tell me your name so that my brothers in Vanaheim may know who was the last of Wolfhair's band to fall before the sword of Heimdall. Not in Vanaheim, growled the black-haired warrior, but in Valhalla will you tell your brothers that you met Conan of Samaria. Heimdall roared and leaped, and his sword flashed in deathly arc. Conan staggered, and his vision was filled with red sparks as the singing blade crashed on his helmet, shivering into bits of blue fire. But as he reeled, he thrust with all the power of his broad shoulders behind the humming blade. The sharp point tore through brass, scales, and bones, and heart, and the red-haired warrior died at Conan's feet. That, my friends, is from the Frost Giant's Daughter. Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, and it's the Robert E. Howard Show, finally. It's the Robert E. Howard Show, once again, where we are talking about The Frost Giant's Daughter, which can be found in this wonderful book, The Coming of Conan the Sumerian by Robert E. Howard. So yeah, my Robert E. Howard Show is a little late, but here it is. And we're talking about The Frost Giant's Daughter, which is an interesting little story. It's very little. It's a short little Conan story. And I'm going to be spoiling it because it's very tiny. And with little short stories like this, it's kind of hard to talk about them without, you know, kind of spoiling the story. So if you don't want to know exactly what happens, you know, just go read the story and come back. You want to do that anyway. This story is fantastic. It has an interesting history, this story. It was rejected by... Farnsworth Wright, Farnsworth Wright, who was uh, the editor of Weird Tales magazine, where all the Conan stories were published. Farnsworth Wright rejected this story. This was in the first batch of Conan stories uh, that Robert E. Howard sent to Farnsworth Wright. And this particular one, you know, he wasn't, re he didn't really approve of Conan's behavior, Farnsworth Wright, in this story. He was a little worried about a hero acting the way Conan does in this particular story. Basically, Conan's chasing this girl across the snows, and, you know, who knows what's going to happen when he catches her. You know, Conan was, you know, a young barbarian. Young barbarians do things like that. So, yeah, Farnsworth Wright rejected the story, not because the story was a bad story, because it's a great story, but just because he was a little, eh, about that part of the story. So Robert E. Howard eventually, he kind of scrapped it, but he did have it published a little later in a, like a small press little fanzine. And he retitled it, uh, The Gods of the North. And he changed Conan's name to Amra because Conan was only being published in Weird Tales and he wanted to keep Conan for Weird Tales. So he just changed the names, basically. And he gave that version to the fantasy fan, which was a small little indie magazine thing, which was published in 1934. 
And that was the only time the story in any version was published during Robert E. Howard's lifetime. Years later, when Noam Press was reprinting the Conan stories, they took this version of the story, which was a little different than the Conan story, the original Conan version. And in 1953, they reprinted it. But the original, original version wasn't uh, reprinted until years and years later. And this edition has the original version of that story. The original version that Farnsworth Wright foolishly rejected. And in the story, Conan, this is chronologically in Conan's life, this would be the first story. He's still in the north and he's uh, battling along with uh, the Azer against the Vanir. And so he's part of this Azir band, even though he's Sumerian. And this all takes place north of Samaria. And Conan's just a kid at this point. He's probably around 16 years old uh, at the time of this story, 16 or 17, something like that. He's just a young Conan. And there is a battle. And as you can tell from that little bit that I read you there, there are only two survivors of this battle, and then Conan kills the other survivors. So Conan is the last man standing, which is no surprise, because even though he's a young kid, he's Conan. So he wins the battle. And after the battle, he looks across the drifts of snows and bodies and everything, and there's a, a young woman standing there. And she is naked. Practically, she's got this little shimmering garment on that you could see right through. Scandalous. And Conan's like, why isn't this girl freezing? And he figures she, she couldn't have come far dressed like this, so she figures she's got to have, you know, be part of a small community somewhere around. So he inquires. And she taunts Conan. She taunts him. And Conan is filled with lust. And she taunts him and she runs off. And he chases her. And he chases her across the snows. Now he's kind of addled at this point because he just got hit in the head, you know, during this battle. So, you know, Conan's not thinking too clearly. Otherwise, he just might be suspicious of this whole situation, if you know what I mean. Like, why is this young woman naked out in the snow where it's freezing and she seems fine and she's running barefoot across the snow? And the whole thing seems a little sus, if you know what I mean. He doesn't care. He's chasing this girl across the snow. He's got a lot of stamina, Conan does. I mean, he just fought in a big battle, but, you know, that doesn't... He's not tired at all. No, he's, he's still chasing her across the snow. And, of course, spoiler alert, she leads him into an ambush. And she calls on her brothers. And her brothers are frost giants. Or they're, they're just these big giant, these big giants that just, they're two big giants and they come out of nowhere. And Conan's like, what? Ambush. Now, this is what this young woman does. Because she is, you know, the frost giant's daughter. <laughs> and so, she is... She is the daughter of a god, and so she led Conan into this ambush, and the brothers are about to kill him. And this is, I guess, something she does all the time. And unfortunately, this time, they're trying this business on Conan. It's Conan. So Conan actually, in this great, very short battle, take, makes, he makes short work of these giants. I mean, he just destroys them. He takes them out like nobody's business. And the the woman is shocked, the young woman. She's like, oh, this has never happened before. He just straight up slaughtered my brothers. And they're giants. Conan's like, they're just giants. You can't escape me. So he chases her again. And this time she's like, it's for real, right? She's like, this crazy kid just killed a couple giants, maybe I'm in trouble. So she, she runs off and eventually she calls upon her father 
and vanishes before Conan's eyes in a scene that is very well written, much better than I'm describing, of course. You should read this story. And uh, Conan is at the end of his endurance at this point, and he reaches out for her, and she gra he grabs her little garment, and then she's gone. And he is found by uh, some of his fellow warriors who had trailed him all this distance. Uh, and they're like, why did you run off? Are you just, you know, did you take a blow to the head? Which he did. What's going on? And he tells them this story and they're like, you know, and then, but one old guy is like, no, wait, no, wait. The same thing happened to me. I saw this woman and I would have followed her only I was too injured. And then Conan's like, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I did just dream this whole thing. And then he looks in his hand and he has her garment. So the whole thing did happen. It wasn't just a delusion. Here I am telling you the whole story. But it, like I said, it's a tiny little story. And the great thing about this story is the way it's written. This is a beautifully written story. Robert E. Howard, like I have said before, when he got to the Conan stories, he was at the height of his powers. He was at the height of his literary powers, which were considerable. He was a pulp writer, but remember, Robert E. Howard was the greatest pulp writer. He was. And, and this is a great little story, uh, which Robert E. Howard got the idea from this, for the story from Bullfinch's mythology. He had a copy of Bullfinch. And uh, it comes from the legend of Daphne and Apollo, or the myth of Daphne and Apollo. He just switched up uh, the situation and instead of having the male character be the god, he had the female character be the daughter of a god. But that's where he got the idea for the story. He turned it into this great Conan story, which has been adapted a couple times into comic book form, maybe three times now. The two, the two that I've read from Marvel Comics and Dark Horse Comics, those have been amazing, both those versions. Uh, those, those were great comic book adaptions. But it, it's... It's a great little story. It is the second story in this volume. And like I said, chronologically, it is the first story. So it's a tiny little thing. The next story we're going to be talking about next week is The God in the Bull, which is an interesting little story. It was another story that was rejected, and I'll go, to, go into that, the reasoning for that next week. And then after that, what comes after the God and the Bull? Then it's the Tower of the Elephant, which is one of the greatest Conan stories ever. So we got some fun stuff ahead. Fun stuff, fun stuff ahead, my friends. I will catch you next time.